Well, we've had a lot of criticism of the Prime Minister's plan so far this morning, so it's time now to hear the defence. Joining us is the Brexit Minister, Kwasi Kwarteng. Thank you for being Hi. on the show. Uh, Thank you. Now, to start off with, there's a lot of stories in the newspapers sure. this morning about the possibility of the vote being delayed. Is that going to happen? My understanding is that we'll have a vote on Tuesday and we are looking to win that vote. I mean, there's a lot of speculation, lots of people saying lots of different things, but we won't actually know until the day itself. And I look forward to concluding the debate and seeing what happens. You say you're looking to Absolutely. win the vote. Absolutely. Can you Completely really look me in the eye and say that you think yeah, that there's a possibility that you might actually win the vote? Look, in the House of Commons votes, anything can happen. And I think that we've got a good shot uh, of winning. A good shot of winning? Yeah, I think so, because the argument is, is a strong argument. I think the deal is a strong deal. I wouldn't have taken up my post if I didn't believe that the deal delivers uh, the Brexit vote. Now, we heard Hillary Benn, <clears throat> we heard him talk about uh, business, we heard him talk about uncertainty, and that's exactly what uh, passing the withdrawal agreement, uh, the, the final vote, uh, will do. It'll deliver certainty. I was in my constituency uh, on Friday talking to business people, small businesses, and they said to me, we need to get the vote done. We need certainty. And they actually looked at me and said, why are you politicians playing silly games? That was the phrase they used. Uh, about, about the future of this country. They, so if we're they... talking about providing certainty then, what is the plan B? Because you must have a plan B. Any responsible government would have a plan B. Well, as, I, as I said, we've got to try and win the vote. I'm not going to speculate as to what happens uh, should the deal or the final vote be voted down. I think that would be, uh, create a lot more uncertainty. I think it would create uh, chaos is a word that's been described. I think uh, Tony Benn himself, I mean, sorry, not Tony Benn, as a Freudian slip, Hillary Benn, um, <laughs> himself said on your show that uncertainty was exactly what business uh, didn't want. And I think the way to end that uncertainty is to vote uh, for the deal on Tuesday. At the same time, though, we've seen around 100 Conservative MPs express their issues with sure. the deal. The DUP said they'll vote against the SNP, Labour, the Lib Dems. Um, the government became the first government to lose uh, a motion, finding it in contempt of Parliament. I mean, these are extraordinary times. What does Theresa May need to do to turn it around and to rescue the negotiation. You're right. There, there are it is, the, these are extraordinary times. I think uh, lots of people are under a lot of stress. Uh, there are difficult issues, um, but I, I would like to put it in context. We were in the EEC and the EU for 45 years. It took us about 10 years to get in in the first place, and we're coming out. And what the deal does, what the agreement does, is actually manage that process in an orderly and smooth way. It's a difficult thing to do. No country has done that. Uh, and the deal on offer, the withdrawal agreement, is a very good way to manage that exit. Now, I understand why people who want to stay in the EU want to tear it down. I'm slightly more confused by Brexiteers like I was. I campaigned very vigorously for Brexit. I'm very surprised that people on our side of the argument are, when we have three months and three weeks left to our formal exit, are willing to blow up a deal which actually offers a very good path out of the EU. Well, let's talk about one of those people, shall we? Uh, Boris Johnson's written in the uh, Sun on Sunday today. He says when he talks to his friends and colleagues about why they might vote for the deal, they offer a groan of despair and only give one reason, which is because they believe there's no alternative. We've run out of time and run out mm. of road. I mean, you're someone who's relatively close to uh, Boris Johnson. Well, Are I... you talking about, about you there? A no, fellow no, not, at all, not at all. I mean, I, I uh, took up my post a few weeks ago. I've spent all my time, uh, almost all my waking hours, on the withdrawal agreement. And I said to Boris, uh, the more I read the agreement, the more I liked it, um, the more I actually got into the weeds of it, because I think it delivers on uh, not three, but four things. It delivers on freedom of movement. We get to have our own immigration policy. We stop the annual subscription to the EU club, if you like, after the uh, initial payments. Uh, we have our own independent uh, trade policy. The uh, CJU ends its jurisdiction. Uh, over over Britain, and uh, it's a strong deal from that. But point there of are view. some issues as well, aren't there? You yeah, can see why are. people have concerns yeah, about I, being trapped in the backstop, for example. Yeah, I absolutely see uh, why people are concerned about the backstop because the backstop is not an ideal situation. Having said that, the backstop is a contingency. So if we haven't negotiated a free trade agreement, then the backstop kicks in. I'm confident that we can uh, organise and sign a free trade agreement with the EU. People say, well, it, you know, it took them seven years to do, with, uh, to do a deal with Canada or Korea or whoever it was. But the difference was that those were third parties. We've been in the EU for 46 years. Or we will have been in it for 46 years. So it should be very 
uh, relatively straightforward uh, to, to, to conclude a free trade arrangement in much less time than would be the case in three, uh, two uh, third party countries. Uh, we'll be talking to uh, Dominic Raab, or we're hearing the interview that I did earlier with Dominic Raab a little bit later in the show, the mm. former Brexit secretary, and he yeah. said that there actually was room to negotiate a better deal when it comes to the backstop, uh, that it could have been uh, just a temporary arrangement. I mean, well, I wasn't, I wasn't privy to those discussions, and of course he has his own reasons uh, for why he left government and why he felt that the negotiations were unsatisfactory. But, to Dominic and to other Brexiteer colleagues, I would say that we have three months and less than three weeks before we have the formal exit day. If the deal goes through, we have a plan with which we can leave the EU. And that's what many of my constituents are saying. They said, we voted to leave, and this is a plan that actually delivers that. So you think now, that if it doesn't go through, we might not leave the EU? Well, you think I mean, Parliament will block well, it? clearly people think that, because Tony Blair was in the, in the studios last week saying that we should have a second referendum. And the reason why he wants a second referendum because he wants to stay in the EU. Uh, and you just have to look at uh, things like betting markets, for example. They're, they're saying that the chances of a second referendum are increasing because of the uncertainty. So I really implore uh, Brexiteer colleagues to think about what they're doing. You know, they will consult their constituencies and their own consciences. But really, I think more uncertainty, more confusion is simply going to, could well frustrate the very end that they want. I mean, the problem that you have is that it doesn't seem like there is a majority for this deal in the House of Commons. Um, if the Norway Plus option, something that your Cabinet colleague uh, Amber Rudd mm. has suggested is a plausible solution, uh, staying within the single market and a customs union, accepting free movement of people, is that something that you could stomach? Um, I, uh, speaking personally, uh, would not want uh, the Norway Plus or whatever uh, it's called, the, the Norway arrangement, because uh, it simply doesn't allow us to have our own immigration policy. And clearly, free mo freedom of movement, free movement of people was a big issue in the referendum campaign, which I um, supported, where I supported the Leave campaign. So I don't think Norway Plus, or whatever you would like to call it, actually delivers on that. So would you resign if that was the government's policy, then? Well, let's just wait and see. Um, I think that we have to win the vote on Tuesday, and then after that, we can see where we are. Um, another potential uh, plan B that people are talking about is a kind of managed no deal. Um, as a kind of Brexiteer yourself, are you worried about what no deal would look like? You mentioned a managed no deal. I want a managed deal. And that's, that, to me, is a better outcome than a managed uh, no deal. I think uh, no deal is, again, adding to uncertainty. It's adding to an air of uh, chaos. And what business people, and not just, it's not just business people, it's actually people who work in small businesses, um, uh, are concerned about is having some degree of certainty. They want, uh, they see it as a soap opera, really, a lot of what's going on, and they want the soap opera to end and they want to get on with their lives. Okay, Kwasi Kwantan, thank you very much for joining us this thank morning. You.